The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. So when you find yourself afraid of something, what you got to ask yourself is, what is it from God's word that I am having a problem believing? When you find yourself afraid that this is going to happen or afraid that that's going to happen or fearful about this happening, what you've got to do is say, now, wait a minute. What does the word have to say about that? I'm a world changer. Now for today's message with Creflo Dollar. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. We have been talking about the many faces of fear. The many faces of fear. Fear, fear shows up in the form of doubt. It shows up in the form of unbelief. Fear shows up in the form of worry. And we've got to recognize the different faces that fear will put on to try to gain access into our lives. And last week we began to deal with the issue of worry and how to be free from worry and how worry is fear-based. And today we'll pick up with that and I just kind of want to bring all of everything that we've talked about together uh, so we can deal with this, this next face of fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 beginning at verse 7 and let's read verse 7 out loud together. Ready? Read. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now the first thing I want you to recognize is this. Fear does not come from God. Fear does not derive from God. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you're operating in fear, please understand that God is not the author of fear. Now, you've got to understand that fear and faith operate by the same spiritual laws. For example, there is something called the law of reciprocals. You take north and south, they are both directions on the compass, but they're direct opposites. And so likewise, the law of reciprocal, like when we were studying fractions in school, Two-thirds, the reciprocal of two-thirds is three over two. They are exact opposites. They're the same, but then they're opposite, you know. They're both fractions. They're both directions on the compass, but they operate inverted and opposite. Well, so likewise, faith and fear are two spiritual forces that operate by the same laws, but they're, they're directly opposite of, of one another. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by the contradictions of the Word of God. It's impossible to please God without faith. It is impossible to please Satan without fear. If you want God to manifest things in, in, from the kingdom of God, you've got to operate in faith. If you want to see manifestations of fear, then of course you're operating in fear. They operate on the same laws, but they're direct opposites. Now, fear is just contaminated faith. Whenever you find yourself operating in fear, you're operating in contaminated faith. And what is it that'll contaminate faith? Fear tolerated will be faith contaminated. If you put up with fear in any form, in any degree, on any level, then it will contaminate your faith. And when you operate in fear, you give Satan the opportunity to operate in your life. When you operate in faith, you give God the opportunity to operate in your life. So it's real simple. In order for Satan to operate in your life, to reap havoc in your life, and to cause certain things to come to pass in your life, you must be, be operating in fear. You must have fear in order to grant Satan access into your life. He can not enter in, and he cannot bring to pass the contradictions of the Bible without you having fear. So wherever there's no fear, you will find no operation of the devil. Now somebody says, well, Brother Dollar, everybody has a little fear. Well, first of all, be careful to say that everybody has something because first of all, you don't know everybody. And so you can't say that everybody has something. And, and secondly, I want you to recognize, uh, you know, you can't say 
a little fear, you know, is all right. No, fear is not all right in any amount, in any amount. It all starts with a seed, and it's not all right in any amount. Some people said, well, everybody has some fear, so it must mean that it must be natural. Fear is not natural. If it were natural, please understand that God would be supporting it because God is the one who created all natural things, and he is still against those things that go against nature. So God is not the author, the creator, or the presenter of any kind of fear that's in our life. So the attitude you must gain is this. Fear is not okay. I'm not going to operate in it. Fear is not okay. I'm not going to have any. Your declaration has got to be, I'll have no fear in my life. Somebody shout, no fear here. Please remember, where there is no fear, then Satan cannot operate in your life. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Now, fear, the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Please listen to this. Satan is that spirit of fear. Satan is that spirit of fear. You see, fear is a dis-ease. It is a disease. Fear is dis-ease. Whenever you find yourself diseased, stressed out, worried, in doubt, then it's because of the presence of fear. And if you allow fear to cause you to be diseased, then diseasement will eventually produce physical disease in your body. You must understand the dangers of fear so that you won't operate in it. Now, we also mentioned to you that the greatest fear, the number one fear that Satan wants to put in, the, in our lives is the fear that what God promised in his word won't come to pass. Somehow or another, Satan wants to try to convince us that what God promised in this book won't happen. And if you come to the point where you are afraid that what God said won't come to pass, now you're in unbelief. So fear and unbelief go hand in hand. And a lot of times, in order for you to deal with your fear, in this case, you're going to have to deal with your unbelief. You see, fear that God won't take care of you and supply your needs is really unbelief that Philippians 4.19 won't come to pass. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. So in order to deal with the fear of lack in your life, you're going to have to deal with unbelief in, in that area of the word that you're afraid that won't come to pass. I use an illustration of the Christmas where the Lord, uh, I believe, spoke to me and said, I want you to give your whole check away, divide it up equally, and give it to everybody that comes in the door during Christmas. Well, my heart was filled with fear, and I grabbed the Bible, went to my bedroom for two hours, looked up all the scriptures I could find on giving and receiving, and I noticed as I began to attack the area of unbelief, at the same time, I began to attack the area of fear. So when you find yourself afraid of something, what you've got to ask yourself is, what is it from God's word that I am having a problem believing? When you find yourself afraid that this is going to happen or afraid that that's going to happen or fearful about this happening, what you've got to do is say, now, wait a minute, what does the word have to say about that? And I've got to go and get in this word to dispel that area of unbelief. And when I get convinced about what the word has to say and I'm no longer in unbelief, then you'll notice that the fear will go away at the same time. Unbelief is just another face of fear that you're going to have to understand that when unbelief shows up, there's fear right there. When anger shows up, anger is just an expression of fear. And sometimes, men, you get angry with your wife because she's got the credit card and she went shopping on Monday, she went shopping on Tuesday, and by the time Wednesday came, you had an attitude because you were afraid she was breaking you. You expressed your fear, but you did it in anger. That's another face of fear. And so what we've got to recognize is all these different faces that show up, but then understand that it is fear-based. It is based in fear. Now, another face of fear that I want to spend time with dealing with today is this area of worry. There are lots of people, especially in this time, that are worried. They're worried about, am I going to have a job? They're worried about, well, how am I going to pay the bills? They're worried about their future. They're worried about their tomorrow. And you need to understand that worry is fear-based. Worry is simply meditating on the wrong things. And what, if you're not careful, you will spend your time worrying about something 
or meditating on the wrong thing long enough until you become a participant in the manifestation of that negative thing being born in your life. Now, I can't tell you how dangerous it is to operate in worry. And growing up as a Christian person, I never thought twice about worrying. I didn't think there was no big deal about worrying, but we, we have perfected it. And we keep worrying about things because we're not understanding what the results are when we continue to worry. If I took a survey in here today, over 50% of you came here worrying about something. 30% of you, even after hearing that comment, you are still worrying and trying to figure out why should I stop worrying just because you said we shouldn't worry. Well, that's why we're going to get, and you're worrying about what I'm going to say. <laughs> so that's why we're going to spend some time into this today, because we've got to get away from it. The Bible is very clear about this subject, the dangers and the things that are born as a result of us worrying. When we come to church as Christian people, we ought to show up in peace, praise the Lord. But you know how it is. Most people don't show up in peace. They show up worried. Oh, I need to go to church. I'm worried. I'm bothered. And it's going to take some training to be free from something that we've made out of a tradition. It's going to take some training to be delivered from it. So you got to stay on it. you got to stay on it. And worry is going to knock on the door. And you're going to have opportunity after opportunity to worry and opportunity after opportunity to get in fear. It's what you do with those opportunities that will determine how you end up and the results that will take place in your life. Well, let's see how this thing all started. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Worry is fear-based. Somebody shout, fear is not okay. Say, I will not fear. Say, fear is not a part of my life. And finally, no fear here. Now, worry is meditating on words that contradict God's word. Now, remember Joshua 1 said, meditate in the word of God day and night, and you will make your way prosperous, and you'll have good success. And Amplify says, and you'll learn how to deal wisely in the affairs of the world when you spend time meditating that word of God. Now, meditation is just pondering the word, rolling it over in your mind, spending time with it. You know, just like you worry, that's meditation, but you're worrying on the wrong thing. Now, now you already, if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate the word of God. Because if you worry, you're meditating that wrong thing. You're, you're sitting back worrying about the thing that contradicts the word of God. Now, let's see how the contradiction showed up. The first time the contradiction showed up. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Well, wait a minute. God very clearly said, if you eat of the fruit of this tree, you shall die. Satan comes up to contradict what God said. Now, here's where we are today. You either know what God said and believe it, or you will submit yourself to the contradiction to what God said and you'll believe it. To meditate on what God said is meditation that's going to cause you to be prosperous and have good success and know how to deal in the affairs of the world. But now if you find yourself meditating on the contradiction to what God said, then that meditation is going to be called worry. Worry spends time with the contradiction to what God said. For example, the news media will continue to pump out to you. It's, no, it's bad. It's bad. Oh, get worried. Oh, there's lack. There's lack. There's lack. And then God's word says, well, wait a minute. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall want no good thing. The Bible is very clear about that. My God will supply your need. I'm your supply house. 
All right, now you're going to have to choose to meditate on God is my supply house. God's going to take care of me. God meets my need. You're going to spend your thought life in that. Or you're going to spend your thought life in the contradiction to that word. To spend your thought life over the contradiction to the word of God is called worry. Now, you, you're going to have to, re listen, you can choose at any moment to spend your time worrying about the contradictions to what God said, or you can spend your time meditating on what the word said. Now, periodically, all of us who have children experience the, the, the knock on the door and the invitation to try to be afraid and worried about the outcome of our children. And when that happens, it's all success is going to be all in how you choose to answer the door. Now, you can choose to answer that door and, and just think about it. You can just sit there and just start worrying about your kids. Oh, dear God, wonder what they're doing. Oh, dear God, what if they're doing this just like Job did? Oh, what if they've cursed God? Oh, what if they're doing this? Oh, Jesus. And, and you, you listen, you'll find yourself in a panic. Panic is groundless fear. All of a sudden, you find yourself so worried and freaked out and stressed out. And your kid at home in the bed asleep. Or, or you can take just the opportunity to say, you know what? I can choose to worry about the negative thing and help it to come to pass in my child's life. Or I can choose to think on what the word says. Great is the peace of my children. Their lives are redeemed from destruction. Hallelujah. They will not leave the word that has been put on the inside of them. They will fulfill the will of God. Now, I, I tested that. I tested that. And within five to ten minutes, my whole mindset changed. The knock came, and, and the first temptation was, go ahead and worry about the negative thing. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. I can worry about the negative thing, but no, I'm going to choose to worry about this, or not worry, but meditate about this good thing, this word thing. Now, if I spend time meditating on the word thing, I'm going to make that way prosperous. I'm going to have good success. If I spend time worrying about the contradiction to what the word says, then I'm going to make that successful and I'm going to cause that thing to come to pass. That's a choice you're going to have to make. And there are just some people who don't want to make that choice. Some, some people are just sitting worrying that they won't be in word no more because I'm preaching about that word. As if you're getting some type of promotion from your worry. And you're not. There's nothing beneficial from God's word that can happen when you're not spending time turning that over in your mind. Yes, it's challenging in the beginning. Yes, it, it's, it's weird. It feels like there's a contest going on in the beginning. But if you just maintain the choice to meditate in God's word versus choosing to worry about something... There'll be a matter of minutes before everything begins to get in gear and starts going that way. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take a week to do this, ladies and gentlemen. A matter of minutes, if you will make yourself and choose to, to, to meditate on what the Word says, then you're going to find yourself going in that right way. So you don't have to meditate on the contradiction. And then look at the devil. It had enough nerve to not only give the contradiction to the word, you shall not die, but then came up with a reason and an explanation. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Therefore, go ahead and understand. You're not going to die because God already knows. Isn't the devil doing the same thing to that? He's showing you the contradiction and then giving you an explanation. Telling you why. Oh, you don't have to pray today. Well, God said, uh, men not always pray and not give up and cave in and, and quit. Oh, you ain't got to pray today because the Lord knows you need your rest. So he's going to give you not only the contradiction, but he's going to give you a reason to hold on to that contradiction. And now you're going to have to know your word. Now it can't be coming to church and just trusting what I tell you. You're going to have to open your Bible up. You're going to have to retire your Bible from just being a, 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 a keeper of your private files or money that you don't want nobody to find. You know, people have money in the Bible, they don't want you to find it because they don't nobody to read it. And you're going to have to open that Bible up. You're going to have to read that Bible so you will know when you're hearing something that contradicts the word of God. So you'll know when you're meditating and thinking on something that contradicts the word of God. You can't come in here, you know, worried about, oh, dear God, what am I going to do for work? Listen, you may not work for that particular company anymore, but the, the truth of the matter is you never did. You work for God, 
who, who called you to be there at that company. So if the company, you're not working now, you still wake up the next morning, get dressed and say, all right, Lord, I work for you. What do you want me to do? Where you want me to go now? Where you want to leave me now? Don't you get down to the break. Don't act like the world. You are Christian people. You stay in faith. You work for God. And God is not going to allow you to be defeated in the midst of famine. He said, I'll keep you alive in the midst of famine. And you'll be satisfied in the midst of famine. Somebody shout, I'm satisfied. Worry and anxiety and spending more time worrying and being full of care and being stressed out and being anxious about things. Your spirit's noisy. It's clogging things up. It's choking the word up. You're praying out of fear. You're not praying because you believe God's word, but you're praying, oh, God, i got to pray because if I don't pray, something might happen. Well, that's a fear-based prayer. Or you get up and say, I'm going to make my confessions. I'm going to say my confessions 50 times a day or something bad's going to happen. Now you're basing your confessions in fear. Fear, if it's the root of what you do, will eventually be responsible for its production showing up and completely paralyzing what God said. So even when you do something like Job, he established an altar and he began to cut this altar, altar and offer these sacrifices, but he was doing it continually out of fear. And at the end of the process, his whole family was killed and everything went bad. Why? Because he did it based in fear. He opened the door up for the enemy to come in because he based it in fear. See, you can do religious things based in fear and give Satan access into your life. So when I thank God, I'm not thanking God because I'm afraid if I don't think if something bad going to happen. I thank him because I'm thankful. So when I praise God, I don't praise him to keep the devil off. I praise him because I praise him. I praise him because he's been good. I, you, you understand, my motivations are extremely important because it'll determine who will be in control at the end. So if fear is your motivation, then fear is going to control you at the end. If faith is your motivation, then faith will be in control at the end. We must not worry. We cannot worry. We must stop it. Look what Jesus said here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. The Amplified says, therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried. Stop worrying. Say that. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. What did he say? He says, stop worrying about your life. Whew. Stop worrying about your life. I can't tell you how much freedom comes when you stop worrying about your life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what this really is about, what I'm really talking to you about today is can you trust God to take care of you? Can you trust God to take care of you? Or do you continue to try to pick it up and, and handle it yourself? And, and Jesus is saying here, stop being anxious. Stop worrying about your life. Stop worrying about what you're going to eat. Stop worrying about what you're going to drink. Stop worrying about the clothes you're going to wear. Stop worrying about your life. Whew. Let me say it again. Stop worrying about your life. <laughs> why? Look at verse 27. There's a reason why. He said, which of you by taking thought or by worrying can add one cubit to a statue? Who, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? You know what he's saying here? You're not making any progress by worrying. You worry all day long as if you think it's going to produce something. It's going to produce something negative, but it's not going to produce nothing positive. It's not going to produce anything from God's Word, and we still do it. We do it as if there's going to be a great harvest that comes from it. And the only harvest you're going to get from worry is there going to be a negative harvest, a bad harvest, releasing things in your body, worrying that's causing chemicals to destroy your body. Your very body releases negative chemicals from every negative thought that you have. And we keep doing it. Because that's all I know how to do. Yeah, I worry. Uh-huh, preacher, I worry. Well, I ain't got to live with you. You can keep worrying. I mean, I'm just trying to tell you you ought not do it. Jesus said, you're not going to get any progress from doing this. And look at verse 33. This was so fascinating. Verse 33. He says that here's what you need to do. See, now we're going to talk about the things you do to replace the worry. And right here he says, 
but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Instead of worrying about your life, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that you need shall be added unto you. Now, here's what he's saying. If you think about what you have a right to in the kingdom of God, then you'll defeat worry and anxiety. Do you realize it's pointless to give in to worry? Now, when you truly trust in God's provision, you will eliminate all worry and fear from your life. In the series, Conquering the Many Faces of Fear, I provide the necessary tools you need to transform fear into faith. So get this teaching today. Your faith in Christ is the key to battling feelings of fear and worry. In Conquering the Many Faces of Fear, Creflo Dollar shares the biblical response to fear so you can remove doubt and worry from your life once and for all. Call in and order your copy today. Worry is based in fear. Worry is not the option. The test of trust happens only when you're able to stand there and be committed in the middle of a storm. Hear what Jesus is saying to you. Stop worrying about your life. I don't have to operate in fear once I receive the love that God has for me. Break the chains of bondage and free yourself from the prison of fear. Creflo Dollar's Overcoming Fear book will give you the armor you need to annihilate worry, anger, and insecurity from your life once and for all. Overcoming Fear will build a fortress of faith that fear of lack, failure, intimacy, and death can't penetrate. Don't put up with it anymore. Get your copy of Creflo Dollar's new book today and stomp out fear. Life is great when things fall into place, but sometimes life runs into a dead end. What next? Refocus at the change experience. All seats and sessions are free. Register today at CreflodollarMinistries.org. May 1st and 2nd in Birmingham, Alabama at the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Complex. August 14th and 15th in Toronto, Canada at Roy Thompson Hall. October 16th and 17th in Dallas, Texas at the K. Bailey Hutchison Convention Center. Welcome to Change. Join us for a change experience in your area. Get the Word of God from Creflo and Taffy Dollar and the powerful teaching of Michael Smith at the Change Experience. All seats and sessions are free. Make sure you go register at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Set yourself up for success at the Change Experience. We are all searching for freedom in our lives, but fear holds us back. Fear of job loss, financial ruin, pain, and rejection. Experience true freedom with Creflo Dollar's brand new book, Overcoming Fear. He'll show you how to take an active role in destroying these crippling strongholds. Receive the Overcoming Fear book along with Creflo Dollar's six CD Fearless series and Sermon Songs Volume 3 CD for a love gift of $65 or more. Get a fresh start. Call and order your Overcoming Fear collection today. Join us at World Changers Church, New York, located at the Paradise Theater in the Bronx. Our service times are 6 p.m. Saturday and 10 a.m. Sunday. For more information, visit us online at worldchangerschurchnewyork.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries has been loving people and changing lives for over 20 years.